Welcome to LARP Academia. Today, we are going to talk about what you get as a level one monk. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like the video. Now on to what you get as level one for monk. Now, I must give you some full disclosure. I myself never play monk. In fact, I personally hate monk, but that makes me the best person to tell you about monk. Why is that, you ask? Well, I play a lot of what monks are good at facing. Magic users and monks, oh, monks, they are a nuisance to all magic users. So I know how intimately to counter them, how to fight them, how to spot a bad monk, and how to spot a good monk. I want to get that out there so we're all on the same page. As a level one monk, you gain the ability enlightened soul. Enlightened soul is where you have achieved spiritual awakening and have the ability to shrug off any effects that would target you. Magical effects, that is. This means that if an enemy says, oh monk, my power makes the ah uh, ah uh, uh, they can waste their spell, but it has no effect on you. You are enlightened. The only way a verbal magic can affect you is if someone touches you. Now this also applies to your teammates. If you have a healer trying to summon your corpse, it won't work because your enlightened soul is a trait and traits persist through death. As a trait, your enlightened soul also does not count towards your enchantment limit. This means that you can take another enchantment without needing a tune or essence graft. Now, for touch abilities, a magic user cannot just come up to you and touch you and start casting. No, you need one of two things in order to be affected by a touch spell. Either to be a willing target or you must be unable to move and engage in combat. As you see right now, I have no weapons. But if I were struck with an entangle ball and could not move, I still cannot be affected by an enemy's spell at the range of touch. Because I could, theoretically, if I had a hidden weapon, pull it out and attack them. As long as I have the capability to attack, I cannot have a verbal cast on me. The most likely time that you will be affected by this is by a wizard shatter spell. When they go up, touch you, when you are frozen and unable to do anything. It is a sad day indeed. The other ability you get as a level one monk is the ability to have projectile block. Now projectile block nullifies enemy projectiles. This means if your hand or weapon touches a projectile, it's done. You could touch a thrown weapon and it could bounce off your hand into a teammate, but your teammate is safe because you have nullified the projectile. You also can catch a thrown weapon or an arrow. In fact, you could catch a thrown weapon and throw it back at a person because it does not wound you. You have nullified it as long as it touches your hand. Now, one important safety tip is when you block projectiles, do not block with stiff fingers. They will possibly bend and break. Make sure your fingers are loose when you block them. When you block with projectiles, you also need to make sure that you passively block projectiles. That means if an arrow is coming, you can't go ha and swat it. No, no. You are a enlightened soul. You must passively bring your hand to block it as if in slow motion blocking them as they come, just like a kung fu movie. You do this so that you do not break projectiles, shatter the shafts, or potentially harm people. And also, isn't it cooler to just block missiles as they come? Just no, no, no. Instead of, I got it! No, no, you are an enlightened being. And this applies once again to your weapons or your hands. Now, speaking of weapons, as a monk, you gain access to all melee weapons. That means you can use a dagger, a flail, a short sword, and 
a long sword. Oh, and one more thing that I almost forgot to mention, a great weapon or a pole arm. Now monks are debatably one of the best to use pole arms because they're unaffected by verbal magics, but there's something that you need to worry about. As a monk, I had to advocate for wielding two weapons, a short sword, another short sword, or a short sword and a long sword. The reason why I advocate for this is because your enlightened soul makes you immune to verbal magic. Your equipment, however, can be affected. So if I'm only wielding a pole and a pesky wizard or druid heats my weapon, I'm unable to wield it now. If a wizard shatters my weapon, then, I mean, I obviously can't wield it. And if a wizard calls pyrotechnics on me to destroy all my weapons, my weapons can be destroyed. These are the three verbal magics you will have to watch out for because they affect your equipment, not you. Now, as an enlightened soul, you do not need a shield. You do not need armor. In fact, all you need are your weapons, your overpowered abilities, and the ability to annoy every ranged and spellcaster or peer spellcaster on the field. You are not meant to go and kill barbarians, scouts, or other stronger martial classes who wear armor, unless you're enchanted. Now, two last things before we go. I do not have a gray sash, but you need a gray sash as a monk. And if you have Look the Part by awesome garb such as this, then you will gain heal once per life. We'll talk about heal later, since you will gain this ability, but that will be for a later video. Until next time, keep LARPing and keep annoying casters and projectile users.